Continuing with our block of study of pollution, remind yourself while learning environment ecology, we very clearly said that uh, HIPCO, the two constituents, one C, the climate change, and two, pollution, have to be handled separately because we do expect and we have been experiencing a series of questions that comes from there. And definitely it should not be mixed up with the biodiversity study. So taking up uh, uh, the account of pollution with certain terminology, we are dividing it into two blocks principally, and then we'll add the tail ender. Uh, one is air pollution and two is water pollution. Abatement measure, global perspective, the things are comparatively restricted. Indian perspective will be learning central pollution control board. So without wasting any time, we are beginning up with uh, the study of pollution. Pollution can be easily applied when you talk about pollution, we talk about those foreign elements which is not belonging to that particular environment and which is inducing harmful effect. So pollution basically is correlated with harmful effect. And when I take the reference of pollution with harmful effects, we identify it to be incorporating two expressions that should be there with us. One is called point source. Point source where you are taking up a specification from where it is coming. So you have specific or specification of the sources that I'm having it with the discharge. It is burning a thermal power plant. India is considered to be one of the leading emitters of sulfur dioxide and the principal source of that is thermal power plants. So I know the source, so it becomes point source. And then the other category is called non-point source, which becomes comparatively difficult for us to recognize. And then the abatement process becomes difficult. So terminology that comes up here should be uh, justified. Added to it, when I talk about pollution and I relate it to my backward link that we have covered with biodiversity, there are certain terms that you should take into account. One is called bioaccumulation. Straightforward question can be asked on. Bioaccumulation is also called bioconcentration. And how do I define bioaccumulation and bioconcentration? It is basically defined to be the entry. It's the entry of pollutants. in food chain and now it can enter via any of the two routes. It can enter by food or it can enter by water. So bioaccumulation is entry. It is also called bioconcentration. Straightforward. Consider the following statement, which of them are correct. You can encounter that kind of question. The second term that goes up in attachment is called biomagnification. And when I take reference of biomagnification, it is basically defined to be increase in the concentration, increase in concentration of pollutants in food chain. Mane, as we are taking up the increase of uh, transfer of the pollutant from trophic level 1 to 2 to 3 to 4, how it is marking up its a, 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 no, concentration increase. So magnification and accumulation should not be treated to be synonymous expression. And though slightly deviated, but this is also the term that has been applied, it is called bioremediation. Bioremediation is basically a solution that we can take about with the uh, pollution. So bioremediation is a method or a measure that is applied wherein microorganisms are used to break hazardous substances into less toxic or non-toxic substances. So basically, bioremediation is solution to the uh, pollution. 
So bioaccumulation or concentration is entry. Magnification is increasing concentration. And remediation is solution. Both basic terms are. Kai bar ekdam straightforward question puch lete hain. To hamari knowledge mein hona chahiye. And that knowledge we take into account to understand on the, these, these factors. Okay. When I talk about pollution, pollution that is any foreign element that is incorporating harmful effect, I principally classify them because when I talk about the pollution and pollution abatement in the global perspective, the two principal category that comes up is air pollution and water pollution. Uske noise pollution, solid waste pollution ke baare mein baat kar sakte hain. But the principal categories hain, wo air and water pollution hain. Air pollution we are handling first and then we'll go to the water pollution. When I talk about air and water pollution abatement, in India it goes under the domain of Central Pollution Control Board and I'll be taking up the reference of Central Pollution Control Board which come into uh, account of it. Food fortification basically is not about pollution abatement, Munish. Food fortification is to cap, is to block the nutrient fibrous minerals, vitamin value that is correlated with it. When I talk about the bioaccumulation, you are taking it up with the pollutant factor. Because when I talk about food fortification, it goes up with what? Increasing the value of the food stuff. Are you getting it? Here you are talking about it in detrimental domain. So fortification is more utilized into the positive sense. Positive sense and I want to block, I want to fortify the utilization, the nutrient that is there with the consumption of it. So it is not in a detrimental sense. Here it is detrimental sense. So pollution is harmful effect orientation. So this goes as our very basic introduction. Now what we go is we take up the study of air pollution. So I just roll it up here. And we begin with our air pollution. So block one begins here. I will advise you to quickly take it down with me. It's something very elementary. But you know, when question arises in question paper, it is like I'm stuck up, I'm not recalling and some throwaway marks questions easily goes out of our hand. I'm not missing out on any pointer. I'm first talking about the general perspective and then I'll take you to Indian domain, wherein which type of programs and policies we are taking up. Now, air pollution, specifically with the convention of long range transboundary air pollution, one of the oldest convention with the air pollution, it is basically defined as, I have already given you that definition, so I don't need to, but still, substances in atmosphere with harmful effect. So point one by default comes out as this. Second point that you should take into account, what are the factors that determines Levels of air pollution. So I'll be repeating it as I'll proceed further. I want all of you to take up the reference of it. So factor A is amount of pollutants that enters air. Factor B is amount of space area into which it is dispersed. Have you ever understood the factor of it that during winters, during winters, we experience more health hazard of air pollution compared to summers? Why that is the case? Because during winters, air is dense. Dense air tends to contract, contract and thus remains in contact with the ground. So the dispersal is less. Dispersal is less, so harmful effect will be more. Consider the following statement, which of them are the determiners of air pollution can be the question is straightforward. And C by default is the mechanism that removes pollutant. Because you need to understand that pollution is something that has got its natural causes also. Nature has the capacity of purifying it. Amount entering now is more. Capacity of air to purify it is proving out to be less. And that is the reason the air pollution is increasing. So in a very general demarcated perspective, quite official one, these are the three determiners of the levels of air pollution. 
increasing levels of air pollution manifest itself in and we have encountered question on this regard one is referred as smog which is very commonly referred as smoke plus fog and two is referred as abc that is atmospheric brown cloud when i take reference of air pollution manifesting itself in smog and abc you have to understand the distinctions that goes up with it smog can have two variants one is called industrial smog and two is called photochemical smog condensation ko recall karenge when we were talking about fog we said fog is near ground condensation contact cooling typically associated with winters and race karo jaldi se but do i take smog to be waiting for winters to be developed na and that is the reason when i say smog is nothing but smoke plus fog isko aise nahi sochna hai ki smog will be evolving only during winters that is not the case industrial and straight forward question can be asked industrial smog is developed due to coal burning major reason ye hai coal burning se aapko kya ho raha hai sulfur dioxide abhi thodi der pehle aapko bataya maximum india is one of the principal emitters of sulfur dioxide and the principal cause of emission is thermal power plants and when i take up the reference of it uh, it is basically correlated with humid air requirement aur humid air yaad karke dekh lena warmer condition hoga to humid air zyada hoga so aap isko is tarah se associate kijiye industrial smog is essentially developed due to burning of coal burning of coal is applied with thermal power plants metallurgical plants etc sulfur dioxide combined with humid air tends to generate industrial smog industrial smog can be experienced more commonly during warm humid conditions rather than what we ideally believe ki bhai smog matlab winter specific hoga sulfur dioxide ke sath aap particulate matter bhi lete hain hum baad mein baat karte hain uski when you talk about photochemical smog it is basically coming up from vehicular exhaust and that is the reason we take it up with the nitrous oxide aur bahut dhyan se notice karte jana isi par based questions ban sakte hain nitrous oxide with a range of volatile organic compounds they combine basically with again sunlight to create out photochemical so when i talk about photochemical and industrial smog they are not associated with the season so a general demarcation jo smog ko hum kehte hain fog plus smoke of course its concentration can mark up increase during winters but for these pollutants in its manifestation i don't need for any season as such i can have its development anyway and when i talk about abc that is atmospheric brown cloud i need to understand it correlates with persistent aerosols remind yourself aerosols are applied to be the consistent or the collective term that is denoted to represent suspended particulate matter i am solid particle but i am so small in size that i defy gravity and remain suspended it is persistent aerosol that has been identified as black carbon or we also call it soot particles largely derived from burning of biomass along with fossil fuel combustion so i'm just writing fossil fuel it can result into multiple hazards and these multiple hazards will be listing in a while i am uh, shrinking it out remind yourself direct questions can be demarcated 
Air pollution is defined to be the entry of harmful substances in atmosphere. What will be the determiners of air pollution level? Number one, what is the amount that is entering air? Number two, what is the space in which that entered amount is getting dispersed? And number three, what are the mechanisms that has been applied to remove the pollutant? If the removal mechanism proves to be smaller, weaker, less effective than the entry, and the area where the pollutants are concentrated is shrinked, that is during winters, automatically effect will be higher. How do air pollution manifest itself in? The manifestation of air pollution officially recognized in IPCC is identified to be two. One is smog and two is ABC, that is atmospheric brown cloud. When I talk about smog, we categorize two types, industrial smog and photochemical smog. When I talk about industrial smog, it is essentially due to burning up of the coal. But photochemical, it is with vehicular exhaust, vehicular exhaust with volatile organic compound. And when we combine the conditions of the development of industrial and photochemical, industrial smog is quite typical to the humid conditions and photochemical requires favorable availability of sunlight. ABC, in comparison, is correlated with persistent aerosol or soot particles or black carbon. And that is principally derived from burning up of the fossil fuel and biomass. You need to give me go ahead. ABC ka bohot important because when I talk about smog, you are having smog as fog and smoke. As the temperature will increase, there will be the dissipation which will be correlated. Smog can create certain types of health hazard that is by default there. But ABC has got multiple range of challenges and I want to create it here. So be very cautious in picking up ABC. It has been identified to be much more challenging compared to smog. So when I say uh, impact of ABC, atmospheric brown cloud, is recognized to be dimming, global dimming, because please recall clouds have the capacity of reflecting back incoming solar radiation. So global dimming, today we don't talk about global warming, we talk about change of the climate. Consistent development of ABC can result into global dimming. It can decrease rainfall pattern due to aerosols. Remind yourself, aerosols are hygroscopic nuclei. Larger the availability of hygroscopic nuclei, Fragmented will be the development of clouds and that automatically will reduce the possibility. It will decrease reflection by snow and ice. This is considered to be one of the most extensive effect of uh, black carbon. Black carbon will create black layer over snow and ice and black will be absorbing heat rather than reflecting. So it automatically will result into ablation. Recall ablation is the process of melting of snow and ice. So it will be directly influencing cryosphere, that is glacial cover and its melt. It can also rainfall due to aerosol, so decreasing or detrimental effect. This can be an extension of it, so I put a star mark. It's a detrimental effect on monsoon. Monsoon is one of the very important and unpredictable weather mechanism already. And in Indian context, it definitely makes up the difference. And when I'm impacting rain, I by default will be impacting crop yield. And I'll be in, in, uh, impacting health. Because normally when we take a smog into consideration, we associate itself with chronic health effect. Chronic health effect is identified with smog.
but ABC goes with much beyond. And the list is ready with us. ABC has to be taken up very strongly and clearly like this. I just want to shrink it up so that you can take reference of all of them. And you are giving me go ahead before I proceed further to add some more technicality to it. We are learning air pollution. And when I take reference of air pollution into consideration, I take air pollution to be manifesting itself in smog, largely associated with chronic health hazard and ABC. It also relates to chronic health hazard, but it has got multiple effects associated. Market kar lete hai, par two types of air pollutants, major air pollutants. One is called primary. And now the question can arise from there, which are the direct product of combustion and evaporation and dusra hota hai secondary air pollutant which is undergoing a range of reactions and thus can give us more complicated kind of characteristics and here you take up the categories of air pollutants, which can be the direct question frame that we can encounter in examination. I'm quickly creating list before I uh, ask you to understand. I want all of you to take it up with me. Uh, primary pollutants are principally categorized into seven. Uh, number one is called particulate matter. Actually, particulate matter can be suspended particulate matter also. I know that its source can be soot, it can be carbon from combustion. Uh, I'm just writing carbon. It, it, it has got multiple sources uh, related to it. And what kind of effect it can induce? It induces health effect. Because when I take reference of particulate matter, respirable particulate matter, and we are taking up the, uh, we are breathing it in, it can create a range of respiratory diseases. So it is largely associated with respiratory diseases. Number two is identified to be volatile organic uh, compounds. So volatile organic compounds, VOC, they are largely correlated with uh, fossil fuel burning. I'm writing uh, FF burning along with uh, emissions from power plants. And when I take up the reference of its uh, effect, it is the reason for genesis of ozone. Ozone as a protective layer is, is equal to which height? 20 kilometers and above. But if ozone is right there into our breathing level, it is going to create health hazard. Volatile organic carbons, volatile organic compounds are associated essentially with genesis of ozone. And definitely it can create the multiple health hazard. List continues and we now add number three for us. Primary, primary air pollutants question can be directly identified. It's carbon monoxide. When I take reference of carbon monoxide, it is again from the incomplete combustion. So, and you need to understand that when I talk about incomplete combustion of fossil fuel, carbon monoxide is one of the principal exhaust, vehicular exhaust as well. Because it is identified to be poisonous, it's too poisonous, Carbon monoxide is also having a massive health effect. So it is basically inducing uh, cardiovascular diseases. Or, you know, say it blocks the oxygen supplies to the tissue. So it has got a range of uh, uh, health hazard. Number four, the principal producer is a nitrogen oxide because we are taking up in all the categories. So nitrogen oxide. It is from nitrogen gas, as the name itself is saying, uh, and wood burning. So high combustion temperature. And so let me write nitrogen gas. That is important for you to incorporate. So nitrogen gas combustion se, or uske alawa wood burning. Se. 
So when we are taking up a very basic activity of uh, burning firewood as, as principal source of heating, cooking in rural household of India, even today, I'm actually emitting nitrogen oxides. And when I take nitrogen oxides into account, it can create, again, respiratory diseases and acid rain with ozone formation. So I've got multiple effect here. I'm writing it. So I do have got health effect. I do have ozone formation. And it can also lead to the genesis of acid rain. So I have got much more hazardous kind of impact that I take up with nitrogen oxide. Then comes in number five, and that is your sulfur dioxide. When I talk about sulfur dioxide, it is sulfur containing fuels that by default will be generating it. And when I take the reference of sulfur generating fuels, especially coal, I've repeated it so many times. Thermal power plants are the principal source that are identified with uh, sulfur dioxide emission. And when I take the reference of its uh, impact, if I have to take account of its impact altogether, I'll be easily associating it with it's a poisonous gas. So health hazard by default is there because it impairs breathing. You know? and can cause acid rain. So, thoda sa agar isko dhyan se ek bar list create karke yaad kar loge na, to maan lo ki koi is tarah ka question poochha jaye, that consider the following air pollutants and their likely effect, which of them are correct where, consider the statement which of them are correct. So, if I am taking up the reference of nitrogen oxides, burning by nitrogen gas, all of us can justify. But with volatile organic compounds, we are talking about ozone formation. We are taking up nitro nitrogen oxide ozone formation and acid rain is going on with the nitrogen oxide and sulfur dioxide. So I think that makes up the sense altogether. Two more are counted among the primary pollutants. So let me just quickly write it. One is lead and two is the range of other air, air, air toxins. So they are called air toxins. Toxics. I think that will be sufficient. When I talk about lead, it is largely from battery manufacturing. And that is what you have to take into account. We have mobilized fossil fuel burning substituted by electric vehicles. Electric vehicles can give us a new problem of battery. And that is definitely giving us the reference of it. It is also correlated with lead smelters. So there are important emitters of it. Right? And air toxins go up. Sorry. All the category, money manufacturing, say, power plant, say, you are correlating it with building material, you are correlating it with solvents. So I have got because I'm not specifying them. And when you try to take up the reference of uh, impact, lead pollution can lead to even the brain damage, and especially for children. So health problem though, hai, and it's quite hazardous health problem that can be there. And when I talk about toxins, it can create clearly correlate with multiple, multiple health hazard. Because we are not taking it up in any specific category. Seven of them are primary air pollutants. Their principal causes and their major impact, sub health impact associated hai. Fir bhi kuch kuch distinguished factor aap justify karte hain. And when I talk about secondary pollutants, we essentially talk about ozone. So I write it here. One is ozone, that is secondary pollutant. And ozone by default is the outcome of photochemical reactions between volatile organic carbons, compounds, I'm sorry, and various types of nitrogen oxides. And it is again VOC plus nitrous oxide. Help. 
नाइन नेम्स When I take reference of air pollution, I identify air pollution to be those toxins, those foreign elements that marks up their entry into the atmosphere much beyond the capacity of air to purify it. Its concentration will mark up its variation depending on season. And of course, the spreading out of the area because air has got the capacity of purifying it, but what is the supply? Air pollutants are direct or indirect product of combustion, evaporation and strong winds. When I take the direct product of combustion and evaporation, we call them primary pollutants. Primary pollutants are included into the list of the global conventions as a seven. Particulate matter, VOC, carbon monoxide, nitrogen oxide, sulfur dioxide, lead and multiple air toxins. Combination of VOC and nitrous oxides tends to generate ozone and pan. All the pollutants incorporate multiple domain of health hazards. 